Okay, we've got a question from John. Could you explain on the development of the uh, ESL for Olympic lifting program and its iterations? I, iterations? Iterations. Um, what were the thoughts behind the changes between the version and attempts and Omni book? And would you program progressing weight and or distance for carries in the Omni book version? Yeah, so in the new one that should be, might even be out by the time you, you hear this, um, easy strength for fat loss. I include, I think, four or five completely different programs. The original ESL for fat loss, ESL, easy strength for fat loss with Olympic lifting program was also called the Fast 15. Uh, it was a conversation Pat Flynn and I had. And it was way too hard, I thought. You know, you fast for 15 hours, you do complexes, you snatch, you clean and jerk, and you front squat five days a week. And that was hard. And I did it, and it was hard. Later variations became much more reasonable. My favorite one is where you uh, we did the squat snatch and the front squat back, back to back. So, so squat snatch for three, front squat for a double, squat snatch for three, front squat for a double. Then you change your shoes. Uh, you go from your lifting boots into your walking shoes. You power clean and press. Uh, one power clean, three press, uh, three three sets of that. Three sets of three in the press. And then boom, out and walk. That one is extremely easy. We did You did the snatch complex, the supersetted front squat, squat snatch, and then clean and press and out the door. So really to answer your question, um, and, and I don't mean to be at all vague on this, John, is that I'll answer a question, I'll slap that up on the forum, or like I did a couple of week, uh, weeks ago, I, I put it up on Watering Weights because somebody asked about it. And so you get the whole program right there in front of you. Um, I, it really just is, um, the, the changes would be uh, the feedback and my own... Yeah. I, I try to do something. I don't know if everybody does this, but before I tell you about a program, I do it. Um, I remember I was at a workshop, Perform Better, one time, and one of the most famous uh, uh, people in the fitness industry walked up and started asking me questions about the velocity diet. And I said, because uh, this person had made fun of it. And I said, well, why are you asking me then? He goes, well, you did it, and I want to know about it. Um, I try not to make fun of stuff I haven't done. I've done Bikram yoga. Uh, uh, I did a lot of it. I used it as part of my uh, rehab. Um, one of the, I got a umbilical hernia doing uh, Bikram yoga when the instructor pushed my chest back in a position and my belly button popped out, which was gross. Um, so I think I can talk about Bikram yoga. I think I can talk about the Olympic lifts. I think I can talk about kettlebell sport. I think I can talk about kettlebells. I think I can talk about power lifts. I think I can talk about American football. I can, I can talk about a lot of things because I, you know, I did them. Uh, so, but the other thing you have to be careful of, sometimes when you start to do a new program, you know, you, 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 you make this plan and you set it up and it makes sense on this, uh, you know, on this piece of paper, it's the smartest program you've done in your life. But once you start doing it within a few days, you're like, what was I thinking? Uh, any any kind of linear progression for me makes me wonder what was I thinking within a few days. Um, a lot of the programs I recommend, like I have the one that was in uh, Wandering Weights a few weeks ago called the Single Kettlebell Workout. It's also in the book, Hardstyle Kettlebell Challenge. And it's a, it's a 20 day program for you to practice what you learned at the hard style kettlebell certification. And, um, and it's like one of the, you know, like on day one, you practice the hinge, you know, you, you do, I think there's a lot of goblet squats and there might, there might even be a lot of like there's Turkish getups, unweighted Turkish getups, goblet squats, and you practice the hinge. Well, the idea on that program is I wanted you to go into the, into the, the, you know, into your garage, your gym, or whatever you have after the cert and get yourself thinking, okay, this is what they, this is what we learned. Here are the exercises we learned. Got to practice the hinge. 
you do the goblet squat, you do the Turkish get up and okay. Okay. And then slowly you, you in incrementally, we add more and more to it. The other day I was looking at it and there is a goblet squat day where it is ridiculous. However, it's a program for a single kettlebell. So if you, if you only have a 16 kilo kettlebell and I'm asking you to do a whole bunch of goblet squats, I'm not really, now, if this was, you know, some barbell program, the volume is way too big. But if it's a goblet squat with a 16K, it's not so bad. So sometimes you have to just keep all those little factors in your mind when you're trying to judge uh, whether or not a program is good or bad. When you go to the Olympic lifts and you're going to lift five days a week in some of my programs, three in some of them, but let's say five, and you do the complex, you do the squat snatch, you do the clean and jerk, and you do the front squat, that's a lot of squats. And if you're doing it five days a week, it's kind of hard to recover. Um, it's a very good question. It's a very good question. It's one of those things that is, uh, let's say this, instead of make, calling it a very good question, it's a very good dialogue. This is one of those times where you and I uh, need to kind of talk uh, kind of back and forth and you'll say something will make me go oh, you're right I get that and then I'll say something and you'll go oh I see what you mean got that you're right that's that this these kind of questions about you know the how a program evolves is me now dialoguing with that piece of paper I wrote to start the program I typed up this program after two weeks, clearly there's too much volume on this particular day or there's too much here or that. And then I go in and I just, you know, we, we clean up that piece of paper. We're constantly in a dialogue, coach, athlete, 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 program and athlete. And that's, I think, one of the, one of the great skills of, of being a good coach is to constantly stay in dialogue and realize that one size does not fit all ever in anything.